The history of the Irish here in San Francisco and in California is an old one. I say regularly that there is probably nowhere else in the world where the Irish have had a, have a more formative impact. In 1871, 1881, approximately one third of everyone in San Francisco was identifiably of Irish descent. There was a need for a home for the Irish here in this, in this city. At that point, step forward the Irish uh, American Benevolent Society, which was organized in 1860 and incorporated in 1861. The mission of this organization was to give proper care to the sick in our community, and also to make sure there was a proper interment for those members who sadly passed away. The organization flourished between 1861 when it was formed and about 10 years later, it had over 400 members, all paying dues. In 1869, they were doing so well that they put together $45,000 to build a home here for the Irish and a home for their own organization here uh, at the corner of Howard Street and what was then uh, a laneway called Howard Court. Unfortunately, by the late 1880s, membership had dwindled. And in 1887, the decision was taken to wind up the organization so it could meet all of its dues. The building was sold, but it wasn't the end of Irish uh, centers here in the city as we know all too well. My name is Anne Cassidy Carew. I am the president of the United Irish Cultural Center, which is located out on 45th Avenue in the Sunset. I'm standing outside of what was the KRB as of 2007 when it burned down. Prior to that, it was where the Irish used to congregate basically from 1910 to 1971 or so. This particular book called Ballroom of Romance was written about 94 couples that met at the KRB. My parents came to San Francisco in 1967 and they lived that story in New York and this is where that story continues here in San Francisco. So we're gonna head towards the back of the building on Mina Street. I don't even know if Mina was around back in that time, but we'll go in the back and check it out further. So we've walked around the block. We're now on Mina between 7th and 8th so that you could get a better idea of the space, the size. Also, if you just close your eyes and think about three levels of dance floors and three levels of an opportunity for people to meet. I've heard through the years that it was probably hundreds, if not almost a thousand couples met. You know, from 1890 till 1970, that's a long time. And it was couples that met at the KRB, at the Knights of the Red Branch Hall, that got together and said, we need a bigger place. So we're gonna continue that idea of bringing people together to honor the music and to honor the literature and to honor the stories of the Irish here in San Francisco. So we're on 9th Street, but we're not really sure where we are. Because 9th Street, like so many other streets in the south of Market after the 1906 earthquake, was just pulverized first by the quake, but mostly by the fire. And that is why I cannot tell you where 129th Street was. It was either here or there or there. It was somewhere around here. And it was the home from 1895 to 1906 of the County Board of the Ancient Order of Hibernians, an extremely old, very venerable Irish American group that until 1895 had been a little peripatetic in San Francisco. The Irish American Benevolent Society disincorporated and sold their huge building at the corner of Howard Street and Howard Court. And this may have been the impetus for the AOH to say we need a dedicated space to improve our organization, to give people a space to meet. This is the meeting minutes book of the County Board of Directors of the Ancient Order of Hibernians from 1898. And this is a survivor of the 1906 earthquake. April 18th, 1806, San Francisco was destroyed by earthquake and fire. They were obviously so rattled that they wrote down 1806 instead of 1906. After 129th Street burned down, they knew they needed another place to go. 
And I think that they wanted a dedicated space. It's not easy running around the city holding meetings in different meeting halls. That's why they ended up at 16th and Valencia where building was happening and the mission was being rapidly reassembled after the 1906 earthquake. That's how they ended up at Kendrick's Hall. Probably sometime very soon after 1906, a man named Kendrick built a hall on this stretch of Valencia Street between 16th and 15th. And unsurprisingly, the hall was called Kendrick's Hall. After being bumped out of their home at 129th Street, the AOH found a space in what they later called Hibernia Hall. And it was right here where Centro del Pueblo is now. This hall served the Irish American community in the Mission District until the late 60s, early 70s, when the Mission District really began to change. It began to densify. And little by little, the community that once came here for everything wasn't coming here as much anymore. It turned into the Hibernia Dance Hall. This is the last clear identity we have of it. It was run by a man named John Hooley. But that's what it started to become, less about meetings, more about dancing, and maybe even less than that as the years went on, until attendance became so small and dwindled away so much that a group of recently arrived Irish immigrants got together in the Piggott's house on Harrison Street and decided that what they needed to do was build a whole new hall. I'm good. Good. Nice to see you. Well, let's go take a stroll inside and see all the goodies that we have here on 45th Avenue. Can on... I get a Guinness too? I'm kind of tired. Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely. Let's go. Okay. So, Elizabeth, this is our hall. Wow. It was designed from 1971 to 1973, the majority of the folks that came here yeah. originally came on a boat here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so there's definitely some, maybe subliminal seduction kind of, <laughs> 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 some, so, some of that stuff going on. So here we are in this empty hall this building has been here for 45 years. 800 volunteers came out and worked weekends and evenings so they could build this building. As a continued tradition, we're coming back to this place. We're coming back to this hall. It makes me think about not just the 45 years here on 45th Avenue, but 170 years. I love this hearth. You don't actually see these in San Francisco much anymore, but I, when I moved to the city in the 90s, you could stand a reasonable chance of going into an Irish bar and seeing a hearth shaped like a, a castle. You hang your pots from it. You do your cooking there. Oh, but we'll put a castle around it too because that's a part of the landscape. That is a thing we remember being around. It's just turned into Irish American kitsch, which is hilarious, but there's actually like a really deep meaning to it. We have a library that no one really knows about because it's only open three days a week. It has treasures, it has ephemera, it has photos of all of what we've been talking about. building again holds 170 years of Irish history and I feel such a connection to that woman force if you will being the Irish president of the United Irish Cultural Center here in San Francisco and just talking about it makes me happy. 
What a great day. It really was. My head is just like... I know. We learned a lot. We did. Yeah, we absolutely did. And we walked a lot. We did. Yep. But where's Robert? Oh. I don't know. Is he still back on Howard Street? <gasps> he must be. Well. We lost Robert. We lost Robert. <laughs> Sorry. You know what? You said he's a history guy. He is a history guy. Okay. So he might have gotten caught up in the historical parts of San Francisco. Yeah, I think he's just probably walking around and having a think. Yeah. Yeah.